it's it's frustrating. Um, it's actually part of my early childhood experience involving cerebral palsy and religion. Um, my grandmother on my dad's side thought she was doing something nice by asking her entire church congregation of I don't even know how many people. It felt like hundreds, um, but I know it wasn't nearly that many. She asked them to surround me in a prayer circle and pray for my healing. I was eight years old. That's embarrassing, I really. Went home. For, for first off, yes, that is extremely embarrassing. Um, I went home to my mom and I was like, I don't want to go back there because they basically just told me I wasn't good enough the way I was already made. Like at that point in time, I still definitely for sure believed in God. Um, but after that, my faith kind of waned and, you know, whatever, because people kept saying, oh, I'll pray for you. I'll pray to make you better. Like as if I wasn't already made the way I was for a purpose. So I was just kind of like, okay, is, are you questioning why I am the way I am because you don't understand or because you don't feel like I was made this way for a reason? And like it just, it became very existential for me as a child. But um, that congregation of people also surrounding me is part of why I'm claustrophobic now. So it's a whole lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. people assume that it's okay to, you know, pray for you out in public. I've had that where they're like, let's stop and pray. It's like, you don't know how I feel. Like, yeah, I believe in God, but you don't know how I feel. You shouldn't assume that that's okay to do. You should always ask. Right. Like, I, I don't get offended by people who ask to pray for me when I'm like, oh, I'm having some issues with my anxiety or my depression or, you know, whatever mental illness is trying to bring me down or anything. I don't have a problem with people going, oh, I'll, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you to find, you know, something that helps you get better and this and that, you know, whatever. I'm fine with that. But as soon as they start, oh, I'll pray for you and your cerebral palsy, I'm like, you don't. No, because it's, it's not changing. I was made this way for a reason. I don't know what it is or who did it or how it happened entirely, but there's a reason I'm like this and I wouldn't be who I am without it. So don't do that. I, like don't pray for it to go away because that would change me. See, I agree with you now. I used to not think that way. I used to be like, please God, like make me, make me better. Uh, but then I, but that was coming to terms with being disabled. And after I did that, it's like, I am who I am, and now I can't imagine what my life would be without the CP. Because I wouldn't be me. So, it's just, now it's weird to think that I wanted... Sorry, Captain. Thank you. Oh. oh, it's okay. Oh, kitty. But, yeah, <laughs> like, I kind of... <laughs> What? She says, I want to be on camera. Now, now there's two of them. <laughs> Go fuck outside. Like, uh, but there's like... <laughs> Alright, so my, my father had schizophrenia. So this was kind of why my view was as it was from my childhood, because the way my dad went about life was um, like, sometimes he had some struggles because he had schizophrenia. He used identity first, so he would say he was schizophrenic. He wouldn't say like, oh, I have schizophrenia. I am a person with schizophrenia. He'd say, I'm schizophrenic if someone asked like mm -hmm. he didn't outwardly do that with everyone but i learned like i am disabled because that was you know how my dad spoke about himself and i learned that it was just part of who you were and it wasn't a bad thing it just meant you were different um so at a very young age 
um, I, I will say that it's had its positives and negatives, but at a very young age, I would have to do things differently. And people would go, oh, well, why do you have to do this this way? Like, for example, swimming. I can't use my legs. But <laughs> I can pull myself with my arms on the side of the pool real well, and I love being in the water. Like, if somebody asks me if I want to go swimming, I'm like, I can't swim, but I'll get in the water. Right. Doesn't it feel freeing? Like, and then they look at me funny. <laughs> because when I get in the pool, I'm like, ah, it almost kind of takes away the CP for me because it just, you know, the water supports me. So I'm just like, I'm in the water. Like. Yeah. I hadn't actually thought about it as freeing before, actually. But yeah, it really kind of does because, okay, so it took me a really long time to figure out how to float. Don't judge me. <laughs> hey, no, no um, judgment here. This is no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it took me a ridiculously long period of time to figure out how to actually float. Like, I think it, I was 16 before I could do it well. Um, hey, but you can do it now. I still think that's fun. <laughs> well right but I think it's so funny because I would have people trying to tell me how to do it and like my body wouldn't work that way so I had to figure out how to do it on my own because like my mom was like oh just like put a bunch of air in your belly and I would and I'd just still be standing and I'm like that is nothing yeah. um, <laughs> like that so, like I had to figure out how to, I had to figure out how to relax my legs because with uh, spastic diplegia my muscles are always really tight so like I had to I had to figure out how to do that but then also trust myself not to fall under when I was like floating so it was a very interesting process but as soon as I figured out how to do it it was really really fun for me really freeing and um I actually took driver's ed in high school, and then after driver's ed, we had swim. So I was in the water, and I got made fun of by some of the high school girls that were like, why are you just pulling yourself along the side of the pool? Like, everybody can do that. And, you know, like, so, yeah. like, so my teacher was like, my teacher, oh, God, love him. Um, he goes, you know what? I'm not going to deal with that. So the next day in swim class, he had everybody do it for the whole class. Nice. Bravo to that teacher. <laughs> like he, had, he had everybody do it. Right? Yes. Like, and by the end of the class, all of those girls were like, I don't know how you do this all the time. I'm like, it's the only thing I can do. So my arms got strong. <laughs> yeah. Because they were just like, oh, everything hurts. I don't want to do this. You know, so it, it was just really, really interesting because he told them they couldn't move their legs. They had to just arm over arm like they were rope climbing. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do anything with their legs, though, to hold on and like all that. So it was it was really cool um, to have that happen just because it put into perspective like, hey, not everybody can do the same things. But if you try it and you've never done it before, then you're going to be like, Oh, like, oh, my God. That's why I love that. Because I wish more people could understand. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think that's kind of why I love uh, Jimmy and Timmy in South Park so much. Because, like, they, they make fun of disability, sure. But they're also, like look, they're real people, they're getting into real situations, like, um, there is actually an episode that talks about the Special Olympics, and yes, of course, Eric Cartman is doing something stupid to get himself in trouble, and he's being a terrible person, but that's him, that's his character. Mm -hmm. Um, and Jimmy, they talk about Jimmy doing steroids, like, <laughs> real things that people might get into in like real sports you know they like they make it true to life in whatever way they can but they're still making fun of it and it's just 
I just love it so much. <laughs> People can tell me all they want, but South Park is terrible. And yes, I know it's terrible. Some of their episodes have um, made me very angry, but still love them because that's kind of the point. Like they make you think about stuff. Yeah. I wish we had more representation, like mainstream representation of disability. Because we really don't. Because I did watch that uh, show Speechless. Um, the character, it was about a family and he had CP. I haven't seen that yet, but I need to. Yeah, he actually has CP. Um, in the show, he has to yeah. use the voice over, but he can actually talk in real life. But that show got canceled. So there's one show that's gone. And I don't really know, besides South Park, of any shows that really tackle disability like that so yeah not that i can think I of mean, anyway i know the deaf community is uh, shown in a couple of things but not very many either um it's it's really hard to find people who are disabled that are actually represented anywhere um and it seems to me almost taboo to like have anybody with disabilities anywhere involved. Like, yeah, it it that it, it does, and that's that's why I kind of wanted to start a YouTube channel because not that I don't know that I'll get big, but the more people that talk about it, the oh kitty. <laughs> oh. The, the less scary it is. It's not even scary. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> it's, I think it's kind of important for us to be able to use our voices. Like, that's one of the things I will talk about when I get on the soapbox of person first versus identity first. Because, like, I don't care which one you use, but if you're able-bodied shut your mouth and let the disabled choose what they're being yeah. referred to as okay thanks but like <laughs> yes you're right because i did a video on that but you're right it should be up to the the individual who's disabled someone who has nothing to do with disability and knows nothing about it be like you should say you know you should say it like this it's like well i'll say it how i want to say it and how i'm most comfortable saying it Like I had, I had a friend in high school try to, uh, she's working with, um, people who are disabled. Like I will, I will use person first when I'm not referring to myself because, um, political correctness mostly, um, because that's what stigma states like you should do in professional situations. But she flat out told me like, that I shouldn't identify as a person for, or like as identity first because it perpetuates the stigma that I'm like, um, no, actually you telling me how I should identify myself perpetuates the stigma because you're telling me being disabled is a bad thing and it's not. Yeah. I'm glad you put her in her place. Yeah, like. She, she got mad at me and then abandoned the uh, argument. It didn't change anything, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very strong on that. Like, I actually had the therapist do the same thing to me. And I was like, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> Let us identify ourselves, thanks. Because if you, if you do that, you take away my voice. And that's, nope. Yeah, um, society already does that in so many ways. You're supposed to be teaching your clients how to use their own voice and how to better themselves in a way. So, like, if you, if you snuff them, it's kind of, like, counterproductive. Yeah. Very much so. I'm show you this real quick. Oh. Like, this is, this is a lot of my life. Cats. All of, all of the cats. Okay. So... <laughs> Oh, I love that. Actually, I swear it's relevant. <laughs> I swear it's relevant because I'm in a lot of pain right now, and the cat that I showed earlier, uh -huh. 
orange one, this one. Oh. He's laying on the leg that hurt, purring very, very loudly, very, very strongly. Um, there have been studies that say uh, cats purr to heal. Um, and they have... You know, I, I, I can get behind that because my, I have two cats also, and they've done things like that. And it's like, I just thought, oh, you know. I, I didn't think much of it, but now that you say that, it's like, oh, well, maybe that they know. Yeah. I, I'm what they call a crazy cat lady. So. <laughs> hey, no shame. I, I read a lot of books. Oh, I have none. <laughs> I read a lot about uh, what they say about cats and healing and, like, how many cats you can have at a time that are um, peaceful and whatever. But, like, a lot of times if I'm in any amount of pain, like, if I'm laying in my bed on my stomach, I'll have a cat that'll come and lay on my back and then start purring immediately. Like, nothing better than a cat massage. Yeah. yeah. It's real. It's a thing. Um, <laughs> They help a lot more than I think even they think they do. Sometimes, but yeah, animals, man, they're more than just pets. Oh yeah. Pain management. Especially for people with surface stomachs. Yeah. Like, <sighs> I've, I've recently had people kind of sell me a little bit flat. <laughs> Same cat that was just on my leg a little bit panicked because I uh, touched her. Oh. Uh, she's, she's something else. But I've had experience recently with people kind of selling me short a little bit. Um, in my place of employment. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of frustrating. Like. I can't necessarily call it discrimination because um, what I was trying to do was be useful to more than uh, two rooms right now because uh, due to my current physical health, um, I can only go into the three-year-old room and the four-year-old room, um, uh -huh. but to go into the school-age room, you have to be able to drive the bus. Well. I pitched, like, if I get my license here soon, could I, like, bring my hand controls in and drive the bus? And they were like, well, we don't need any more people to drive the bus because we have 10 and only four of them do it regularly, blah, blah, blah. And, like, that's fine, but what if like, one of those people is sick? And, you know, yeah, they're just not, seems like they're they, just not giving you the opportunity to, like, that would be an option if you got your license. Yeah, like, like we could do that. Like, like they we, even we, told me, like, they have to really want the people that they get to drive the buses to drive the buses. And basically, they told me um, I wasn't worth that effort. And I was on the, like, bottom of the list to call for people to come in when somebody's out sick anyway. So wow. It's kind of upsetting and it. Yeah. What a what a like a yeah. self confidence yeah. crusher. Like, like you're an employee, but like you're at the bottom, okay? But continue to work for us. <laughs> like that, the director said that word for word too, and I was like, okay, like is this your choice or the owner's choice or like what? Because. That just sounds like a bunch of. It just frustrates you. Wow. That. I mean. That pisses me off. But <laughs> it's discrimination, but it's not discrimination that I would ever win a case for because they have a valid reason, because they have too many bus drivers already and whatever else. And yeah, that's just they, excuses they, hiding they, behind. Uh, yeah, but they have, I'm sure they have paperwork somewhere that proves all of that, but still, it's like something that frustrates me. So, like, I'm looking for a different job currently, and hopefully I will have some luck with that. 
more, but like, well, I'm. That's one of the things. Oh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be laid off here next week, so I'll be doing the same. Yeah. So. Where are you working at? Uh, I work at the. Oh, I'm up. I work at, uh, I work with uh, people with traumatic brain injuries. Um, I'm the vocational assistant currently, um, which I help them do like pre-job skills and like getting comfortable doing interviews, resumes, stuff like that. Um, but the I funding is tight because we're they're not for profit. So my grant that was supporting my position is. Um, done and now we're yeah. and now we're running at they're running like they can't really support me so no bad blood but it's like oh yeah. that sucks <laughs> like it's not quite discrimination I guess but it feels a little like it and, and jobs like that though I feel like disabled people should be there more because you know if we can have jobs ourselves we can teach other yeah. people how to have that's why yeah that's why i was like, like i that's why i was so happy when i got the job because it's like here i'm disabled right. helping other disabled people get a job yeah like and now unfortunately circumstances now i won't have a job so <laughs> i mean find something though yeah no i'm i'm still looking and like after you know this experience like it, it gives me more hope that like i will find a job and but i mean after i graduated from isu i for two years i didn't have a job so it was a rough time but yeah. but now after having a job and being like now i have you know all this good experience and I can put it on my resume and hopefully someone will see me as valuable, even though I have a disability, but we'll see. Um, and I hope you yeah, feel the same okay. way. I didn't get my first job until, um, October, 2018, really. So like I've only been where I'm at for about a year ish, a little over now, but um, that's all she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Love me, um, man. I've been at that job for about a year, but like, I didn't mean to wait as long as I did. I just kind of had <laughs> she ran a button on my phone. I'm sorry. Yeah, cat tail. Um, <laughs> hang here. But. I didn't really mean to wait for that long. I just kind of had, uh, well, I mean, I lost my dad at the end of 2017. So oh, I was man. kind of just in a rut, in a hole. Um, so after I graduated in May, 2018, I just kind of took a break for a bit and then sat with it for a while. Um, right. But then I got my job and it was great for a while. And, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that I'll find something else that's fitting because I'm already, I already have at least one, um, location that I'm speaking with now. So. Well, that's good. Hopefully they'll still want me after they meet me. 